You ever wake up in a hotel room tied to a bed frame with all your shit missing, asking God, how the fuck did I get here? You can't remember anything like it's the hangover? Yeah, me neither. So we have to talk about something I don't really want to talk about. See, I don't know if it's just getting older. I know some people speculate your mental ability is at its like maximum power. Like you know everything, period, that you're going to know. Like the, the maximum, like it's a big part of the conspiracy about why they killed MLK and Malcolm X at the ages they did is because... So if they get to be 40 years old, it's going to be terrible. They're going to unlock full brain capacity. They'll be able to change, change the world. All right. I don't know if it's just that. The older I get, the more I have a telepathic ability when it comes to predicting fight outcomes. I knew what was going to happen there last night. I'm not even going to discuss it properly. I knew that was going to happen. Hey, Mike got paid 20 M's to take a die. You were not fighting Mike Tyson, though. You have to, you have to really separate. It's like what uh, Dick Gregory said about, oh, there's two Trumps. It's kind of the same thing, but kind of not. He meant two Trumps in a different way, okay? Dick Gregory might be crazy for all we know. I don't, you know, just ignore that. Ignore that. There's nothing to see here about that. But with Mike Tyson, okay. You compare it with Michael Jordan. Think about it. everybody who's the best at everything. He's named Michael. Michael Jackson. Mike Tyson. Mike Jordan. Pops is like the Michael Jordan of flying planes. His first name is Michael. The one serial killer who can't die in the movies. His name is Michael. I'm named Michael. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so. Um, who the fuck was I going to? I was going to bring us. Oh, Michael Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Moore is like the best at not having a side. You ever notice that? I've, I've spoken about that on here. Michael Moore is like a, uh, it's like a double, triple, quadruple agent. Like, he's got so many sides. He's a polygon. You never know whose sides he's on. He's like Michael Moore making a documentary. I just have to say this. It's like Steve Austin just interfering in a match. And you, you never know whose side he's on. <laughs> Who come out with Fahrenheit 9-11, they'll be like, oh, Bowling for Columbine. They're trying to take the guns. But then he'll be like, oh, but George W. Bush is a bad guy. Oh, but the Clintons. Oh, like, you don't know what side Michael Moore is on. He's like the fucking best at not having a side. So, that's neither here nor there. That has nothing to do with this. You have to put Mike Tyson into... There's two Mike Tysons, okay? There's Mike Tyson before the face tattoo and Mike Tyson after it. They're the same person. There is one Mike Tyson. But those are two eras. You, The Mike Tyson, all the shit that the Mike Tyson with the face tattoo did to tarnish Mike Tyson's reputation left... The reputation of the unfaced tatted Mike Tyson completely unscathed, if you notice. They're the exact same person. But here's the thing. Mike knows the face tattoo. Is <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over being sick right now. We almost out the woods with it. But, um... It's like one motherfucker coming in the door. Hey, Woods in here, brother? No, no, we don't do that over here. <laughs> That's all on the West Coast. That's down south, man. We don't do that over here. <laughs> but, anyways, freaking, so where was I getting at with this? Yeah, the Mike Tyson with the face tattoo, his, his reputation already been tarnished. It's been tarnished. 
R word charges, allegations, whatever. Um, if he, he bit a Vander Field, Holyfield's ear off because a Vander Holyfield was going to beat him. Vander was nasty, and people don't even like to give him that type of credit. He really frustrated Mike because because he's a very fast outside in puncher. I mean, he's going. He's, he's got the reach, so he's going to do this. Then he's going to get close, do this. Then he's going to go back like this to where Mike's like. And that's why that happened. You yeah. know? So, people are talking about this. Oh, this is so bad for, for his legacy. No. No, it's not. At all. Because he understands, as well as I do, that legacy is untarnishable. Of him without the face tattoo. There's nothing you can do. To Mike Tyson. With the face tattoo. That's going to affect. The legacy of Mike Tyson. Without the face tattoo. Which let's be honest. Is the real legacy of Mike Tyson. All the real big fights he did. The, the fights that made Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Were without the face tattoo. It's like the. The um. <coughs> I can't compare it to George Foreman. That was different. That was George Foreman just like, I can still do this. And he really could. The division was different at that time. Safety off. Anyway, so. <coughs> yeah, sorry, Miss. That had nothing to do with this. When it comes to what happened. I already knew he was going to lose. I looked at the weigh-ins. I said, I don't even need to watch this. I realized there was no drug testing going on. I said, I don't even need to watch this. I noticed the stalling and hype machine going on. I don't even need to watch this. I knew it, I said. Jake Paul is going to win. As much as you do not want that to happen. <laughs> Just look at the... Mike Tyson's not a tall guy. He's not a tall guy. Both my parents have met him before on multiple, multiple occasions. My pops, who used to fly planes for American Airlines, right around the time I was born, and he was one of the first flights after I was born, 1993, 94-ish. This is right before the face tattoo. He's world champ at this time. It might be 91, 92. It was right around the time I was born. Either shortly before or after. My pops is, uh, you know, he, he's got a flight. He's flying. I forget where he was flying to. He tells the story all the time because it's like literally some like Matrix shit. <laughs> The, the agent, the booking agent at the gate had double booked, meaning booked them for the same exact seat. That was the only seat left in first class. It was uh, the aisle seat that's right behind the cockpit. I think that's called six. I forget what it is, but six E is on the, on the, on the, on the side though, but on the aisle. So it's like six E or whatever. Cause I think six F is the one that's all the way to the right. That's the window. <laughs> but they had both been booked for the same exact, because it was the only one left in first. And um, I've told this story on here before. Uh, he had double booked Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson when Mike Tyson was world champ for the same first class seat. And Ali being the guy he is goes, man, let the champ have first. I'll go to, I'll go to coach while they're trying to try to figure out. Just, just uh, off rip just goes, I'll go to coach. It don't matter. <laughs> And so my pops gets a plane there. They're in there. About 10 minutes after they reach cruising altitude, they're about to bring drinks through. Uh, <laughs> my pops gets a phone call in the cockpit from fucking the flight attendant to the back. And they're like, uh, Captain, can you come tell Muhammad Ali to sit down? Because he's just standing up, signing autographs, taking pictures with people, treating this like he's treating coach like it's a meet and greet. We can't bring drinks through. So can you please come back here and tell him to sit down? Because we can't even get to him to tell him that. My pop said, he's the greatest boxer who ever lived. No. Hangs the phone up, keeps flying the plane. 
greatest fucking story ever. Like, out of all the celebrity stories my father had of people being on his play who were celebrities, that and the Oprah one is the fucking best ones. The Oprah one's only cool because, like, it's just so fucking, like, weird. It's just like, Oprah does not speak to the help, but she'll have a diet coke. And I'll have a diet coke. <laughs> She literally had a white lady be a spokesman for her to the flight attendants. And she was, she was, my mom was like, if I was a flight attendant, I would have smacked her. She said, and my pops was like, you wouldn't be a flight attendant no more after that there. You would have lost your job and we would have had to divert to put you off the plane. And Oprah would have still been flying. <laughs> so I knew this was going to happen. That's not what I'm mad about. I don't care about the fact Mike took a dive at all. He Listen, you can say he took an L as much as you want. Whatever, cool. He still got 20 M's for it, though. He still got 20 M's just to prat four on the floor. That's a dub in my book any day. Any day. And he knows as well as I do. You can't tarnish. You can't do anything to the Mike Tyson with the face tattoo that is going to change anything to do with the legacy of the Mike Tyson from punch out. It's not going to happen. You cannot affect the legacy of that by doing anything to the Mike Tyson with the face. Tag. The R word charges couldn't do it. Nothing. Tommy Morrison, nothing, nothing. That's not what I'm mad about. And I really, really hope there's a group of angry old individuals from the 90s who used to listen to Onyx, who grew up on some Mike Tyson, who are at wherever the fuck Jake Paul is at right now, like 28 of them deep, walking around hunting for this motherfucker. Just 28 bald headed ignorant, ghetto, Tim-wearing people from the 90s. And they're going to find Jake Paul. And he's going to be on the ground staring at the roof of the church and staring at the Back the Fuck Up album cover with like 28, 40-something-year-old names just... And one of them got the Tech 9 like this, standing over That's That's what I would like to see. <coughs> but that's neither here nor there. That's not the point of this. That has nothing to do with this. Why am I mad? Jake Paul goes, well, I just had this crazy idea, you know. That doesn't mention that, oh, Eddie Guerrero died yesterday. I can see, like, Logan's face when they're doing the thing. Logan's like, we really shouldn't be doing this. We really shouldn't. And it's funny because I've never even, like, really watched their content. My wife used to when she was much younger. And she's like, oh, Jake is so much more reserved than, than Logan and shit. And I'm watching that entrance. And, like, Logan knows, like, who works with WWE, he knows he's going to hear from guys like Undertaker. Shawn Michaels, all the guys in the back and the, who, who are now doing training and shit. Guys like, especially guys like Dean Malenko. And he probably has a direct working relationship with Dean Malenko, given the weight class and uh, style that he does. They're all very mad. Ray is probably fuming. Someone might shoot on Logan Paul in his next, in his next match. They might really shoot on that man over that. Like, and he, you could tell he does not want to look direct ahead. He just wants to look to the side like this the whole time in the fucking low rider. When the, someone came to me and said, and did you see what he did with his entrance? I didn't even see it. And I knew what I said. He did that shit with the low rider, didn't he? Didn't, like, literally the day after he died and says nothing about Eddie Graham. See, it would have been a little bit different. If, like, you had the announcement or something, and said, oh, he's paying tribute to great fallen legend Eddie Guerrero, whatever. First off, first off, if you notice, Rey Mysterio did that shit with the lowrider once, period. 
and it was never again. And that was out of respect. That was out of respect and not wanting to get something that was meant as a tribute misconstrued as you stealing someone who's dead's gimmick be trying to ride their coattails. Trying to ride their dead ass coattails. So that's where my problem with it is. And that's why I really hope like 28, 30, the, <coughs> like just people who used to listen to Onyx in the 90s who are all 40 years old and bald. People who look like the dude Breaker I was with in jail. I don't know why your name is Breaker, but that's your name. <laughs> Yo, Breaker was like the most gangsterous motherfucker in that door, bro. It's like it's like one of those names you don't want to ask. Why are you named Breaker? <laughs> so fuck yeah, I just hope like forty of these motherfuckers all look like Breaker. Jack, this fuck just came out of doing ten in the pen. <laughs> see this shit. This is the first shit they see when they come home, and they just happen to be local to Jake Paul, and he wakes up looking at the. Onyx back the fuck up album cover standing over him 30 deep in real life. I hope that happens. I'm not threatening. I'm hoping for shit like Obama. It wasn't illegal when Obama hoped for things, was it? No. Hoping. It's not illegal to hope for anything. We're not saying we're going to do anything. We're saying we would like to see something happen. Real story. True story right there. So I'm very disappointed Mike took an L, but at the same time, bro, he got grandkids. If you told my pops, who will never take a dive for nobody, hey, go in this ring, get hit a few times and fall on the ground for 10 seconds, we'll give you $25 million. I can't say my pops will do it because I don't know his, like if he's as broke. I don't know Mike Tyson's financial situation. Um... I know if my pops was broke and it was like going here for like five minutes, just fall on the ground eventually. And then just like count to 10, you're not really even knocked out. Like my pops would probably do it. If you really needed the money and he knew he was getting $25 million. I don't think for 20 M's pops would do it, but I know for 25, 30, my pops might do it. He might do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, like, even for me, if I was like, yo, Pops, just get this on camera. No, what the fuck you want me to get knocked out on camera for? I'll pay you $30 million. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do this? Like, the tone is going to change. Like, you're going to feel the will move. <laughs> the moment $30 million come into question. Because then he's not thinking about, well, I'm going to look back on camera. He's thinking about, well, that's $30 million. I can pass on my son, pass on my grandson that becomes 60 million that, 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 that. you know you start seeing the the rain man in the casino things pop up on the screen <laughs> so yeah i'm very pissed off i woke up very pissed off and the only reason is that fucking entrance bro everything else could have went the exact same way and i wouldn't be pissed i wouldn't be pissed but for you to drive that, like, okay, if you showed up in, like, a red lowrider or something, like, where it didn't look exactly like the shit Eddie used to drive, it wouldn't be that bad. If it wasn't the day after, excuse me, I'm not going to chop this up either, so y'all going to have to bear with it. If it wasn't the day after Eddie Guerrero like, it wasn't the day after his, his, the anniversary of his fucking death. Wouldn't have been that bad. If Jake Paul didn't say, oh, I just came up with this crazy idea totally in my head. Not because Eddie Guerrero's death. It was the 19 year anniversary of Eddie Guerrero's death yesterday. No, not because of that. It has nothing to do with that. That walkout music tells you everything you need to know about that being staged. I've said it for years. Boxing fake, MMA fake, wrestling fake. The only difference is wrestling's the only one that's fake all the time. 
And it still hurts. I mean, it's the only one where it's like choreographed, staged, a winner has been decided. That's what I mean by fake. I don't mean fake as in it's not real. I mean it's fake as in it's staged. Jake Paul, I really hope like 40 fucking people who are like all in their 40s used to listen to Onyx and now look like them find you in public and you wake up staring at the back the fuck up album cover. But instead, just like five people, it's 40 people standing over, over you and like three of them have tag nines. I'm out this bitch.